and welcome to Tuesdays with Tammy. These will be videos that share the ups and downs of people's lives and how they've managed to make their pain their power, how they've created entrepreneurial empires, how they fully pulled themselves out of the darkness and into their very own light. The basis of most of these stories will show how you can make mental health wellness a consistent form of self-care. You'll laugh, cry, and have aha moments. But most of all, my hope is that you may even look at life differently. Discover your personal power to survive and thrive in the most challenging situations. Who doesn't need a weekly dose of that? So today I have an awesome guest with me, and it is Dr. Hewan Frederick. Let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Frederick. He's currently a practicing physician for nearly 20 years. Dr. Frederick has had the experience of helping thousands of women from puberty to childbirth, menopause, and beyond. Trained in the fields of obstetrics, gynecology, and bariatrics, he has the unique ex expertise to help women through life's many stages. Since establishing Nile Women's Healthcare in 2006, Dr. Frederick's practice has grown to be among the largest women's care practices serving the North Fulton area. The reason women choose Nile is not its size, however, but rather the personal attention and emphasis on patient participation in their own holistic care. Dr. Frederick currently serves as chairman of Women's and Children's Services at Wellstar North Fulton Hospital. He is board certified by the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, a member of the American Medical Association, the American Board of Bariatric Physicians, and the National Medical Association. He is also active in the community, a supporter of the March of Dimes, and as a member of the North Fulton Chamber of Commerce. He is married and has three children. Let's welcome Dr. Fredericks. Hi, how are you? Hey, how are you, Tammy? I'm great, great. Glad well, to have well, you here. Thank you for having me on your show, and that was an excellent uh, introduction here. I feel like I'm looking around saying, who is that? Is that me? I know, right? Sometimes... Sometimes it feels like that because what you're doing is what you are passionate about and it's what you feel like you've been led to do. So you do it without thinking about all of the accolades that you have built up to get to this point, right? Absolutely. And, yeah. And, you know, it's always a, a pleasure to, uh, uh, to do something that uh, is your job, but it feels like, you know, it's not work, you know, and so I, yeah. I love that I'm doing that. Yes, exactly. So tell us a little bit about how you got to where you are now. I mean, have you always known you wanted to be a doctor? Uh, it's a, a, a sort of a circuitous route. I mean, I knew I kind of wanted to be in medicine at some point, you know, uh, uh, growing up, you know, I think every in every phase of life, a young boy wants to be either a policeman or a fireman. And I kind of wanted to do that at one point. Then, uh, you know, when I really seriously started thinking about career choices. I thought about being a pilot, but didn't, you know, the internet wasn't around at the time and I didn't know how to get into flight school or anything like that. I, okay. I went and looked into the Air Force and they said, because you have, uh, you wore glasses that I wouldn't be able to fly. Oh. I always had a, 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 a liking for science and, and a wanting to know. And so, you know, I kind of felt, well, hey, I'll, you know, I can kill two birds with one stone. I go into medicine and maybe I get a, a pilot license later. And I just kind of stuck with the medicine thing, went into college and university doing biology and decided to apply to medical school, got in. And, and, and you know, as they say from there, the rest kind of just took off and got and I got in here. OK. And so so that's that's what's on the, um, the outside. Right. But was there anything inside you that just made you want to be able to heal people, to help people? Was there anything in your life that kind of led you in that direction? Well, I'll tell you this. So in, in, in medical school, you kind of, you know, you, so I know I wanted to kind of be uh, helpful. I knew I wanted to kind of uh, uh, um, help people in any which way I can. Uh, medical school kind of drove that sense of responsibility into you, drove that sense of, you know, it's not just about you, it's about kind of being a part of the community and helping those and really taking the profession for for what it is, it's more than a profession, it's really like a calling. And I think, you know, uh, we're socializing that way to the point where I even feel like I got to that point where, you know, it's bigger than just just me. It's about sacrificing your time. It's about making sure that you put yourself, you put the people before you. Um, and I think that is kind of like where I, that was really founded in me in, in school with me and the rest of colleagues around me. 
Okay, okay. So when I hear you say that, that brings me to ask you, what sense of uh, responsibility and sacrifice did you feel and experience when the COVID-19 first presented itself? So COVID-19, that's very interesting. You know, I, it, when it first came out, you know, I, with me and my scientific background kind of felt like, well, this could be a big thing, but never really, really understood it or how big it would be until it really got here. And I realized the, 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 the profound impact it has on everything around us. You know, it has economic consequences, it has mental health consequences, on top of just the health consequences. Yeah. You know, at first when I heard about it, it was something that, you know, if we were first fooled into thinking that it just affected older people. But now we're seeing that there's effects across the spectrum. And there are even young people that are, you know, succumbing to this disease. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a big deal. And I, I feel like uh, we need to pay more attention to it because it does kind of impact us across the board, you know, in many different aspects of our lives. And yeah. not just only health. Right, right. What kind of things did you see with your practice? Did you have a lot of expectant mothers or people who were trying to get pregnant um, expressing concerns over how this might affect them? Absolutely. You know, I, again, there's a lot of unknowns with regard to what's happening in this virus right now, and we're still kind of really getting a firm grip of exactly what, uh, what the effects are. Um, naturally, pregnant mothers are always going to be concerned about how this affects them and their baby. Uh, we know from history that, you know, just the, the influenza, the common flu can be deadly to pregnant mothers. And so initially, I think our thoughts was to really kind of, you know, uh, equate uh, the effects of the flu with what the COVID uh, virus says. We don't, that's not proven and we're not sure yet. The, what I found, I'm, I'm, happy to, I'm happy to report so far that through the experiences, that, the limited experiences that we've had so far, we can say that it doesn't seem to have the effect as if like it was the flu. However, you know, given the fact that this thing is a, 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 a deadly virus, uh, it remains to be seen. And we want, I, would extreme, I would advise a caution, pregnant or not, you know, as far as this disease is concerned. Okay, yes. And did, um, did you feel like there was any mental health um, being affected from your, your patients? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you know, again, uh, mental health kind of surrounds us all and, you know, and and I will tell you that this is the mere fact that people are feeling shut in and not being able to kind of go out. The, the, the increased pressures with having to take care of not yourself, but also your, your children or teach your children in the household. The, 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 the stress that people are under because they may potentially lose their jobs or having to work in a new environment. This all pours out in different ways. You know, I personally have met people who have had like, you know, emotional breakdowns in my office you know, with regards to all this new, newfound pressure um, and looking for ways to cope. Um, you know, this also can also manifest itself in, in the way you present as far as your health is concerned. You know, there is definitely a correlation between increased stress levels and cortisol and cortisol causing your, your, your uh, cholesterol to raise. So, uh, you know, and, and people manifesting themselves with different rashes and that sort of stuff. So mental health is definitely being affected now with what's happening. And I'm seeing it, you know, not only just through pure manifestations of like uh, stress, but also, you know, physical uh, and, and, and health issues presenting themselves a little bit more frequently. Oh, definitely. I have seen uh, many of my clients in my office uh, present with more physical ailments because of the mental health portion uh, creating uh, higher levels of anxiety and depression and it's showing up in more uh, physical ways and so what I do is I usually recommend that they you know contact their their primary care doctor and and to take it from there to uh, to assist with those physical ailments but then I give them you know, uh, coping mechanisms to try to help with the mental part of it so that it, they can work together. But I have seen uh, more increased physical issues uh, that they have complained about to, uh, as well. Absolutely. You know, not to mention that physical issues is one. I've also kind of seen a phenomenon where, and I've read it in the news, where even like relationships that uh, issues are, uh, are more uh, pronounced. I've had a couple people in the last week present you know, complaining that of you know, spousal abuse and that sort of stuff being picked up. So, you know, this whole thing is kind of like 
a pressure cooker where, you know, if the issues were there before, I think they're just only being magnified now, even, even you know, even, better, even more uh, with this uh, added pressure around us with COVID-19. Exactly. And there's going to be so much that's affected by it, you know, from the fact that we are, uh, for um, lack of better words, we're, we're actually probably hurting our immune system by having to stay so clean all the time and disinfecting everything. So that's one of my concerns. The other concern is the mental, um, the, the mental stress that's on people that, that are not really realizing it's there yeah. for them. Now, it might have been there before, but it's escalated. And if it was not there before, it's there now. They don't know how to identify that that's what's, what's going on with them, so they don't do anything about it. Um, I also see uh, potential in, you know, increased rates of uh, um, crime and, you know, stress and uh, maybe even suicidal ideation um, because people are losing jobs. They're, they're not making any money. They're having to, you know, take care of a family. Um, also, you know, another thing that I, I'm sure some people have thought about is, you know, what is the world going to be like when we can finally be completely free? I know Georgia has opened up partially, but when we are completely able to go back to what we used to know as a norm, which will still have been shifted, so it won't be quite the norm it was, but how we're going to interact with one another. I mean, you know, people used to get together. The first things they do is give them a big hug, yeah. shake hands, uh, maybe a kiss on the cheek or just sitting close together, walking close together. It's like now, even when you go outside to exercise or you, or you take that chance and you go to the grocery store, everybody's a suspect, right? Uh -huh. You're looking at everybody sideways. Or yeah. you're, you know, I've even noticed myself walking down the sidewalk, if I'm going to pass somebody and they're not wearing a mask, at least, then I, I have my mask on yeah. and I'll like actually, you know, act like I'm just rubbing my face, you know, cover my <laughs> eyes and turn away a little bit and I'll say hi, you know, and just keep yeah. going. Yeah. How crazy is that going to be if our society has to act so distant? And they don't have to, but they will feel like they have to once, once everything gets back to where it feels safe. I totally agree. You know, I think, you know, I mean, I, I'm sure you've experienced it as well. You know, I, this is allergy season for me. And, you know, usually during allergy season, I'll have a little dry tickle in my throat, you know. And now I'm conscious, If I'm very conscious if I'm in, a, in public and I have to cough, you know, because I'm like, oh, my God, I don't want anybody thinking I have COVID. <laughs> but I do feel like the, the new normal, at least for a, for a while, I, you know, I feel like eventually human nature is to kind of revert back to the norm. But I feel for a while, you're going to have to be getting used to people walking around with masks, you know, and maybe gloves and, yeah, we probably have to, have to refrain from shaking hands and, and being uh, that, that sense of touch that people crave. You know, yeah. people have to deal with that, that, that connection, that, that, that the connection with touch. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you also mentioned something that's very important, and I, I do agree. I feel like, you know, stress manifests itself in so many ways. And in a lot of ways, sometimes that stress can, can weaken your immune system. Yes. So, you know, that's something that we need to be aware of. Um, and you're right. You know, the immune system, in order for the immune system to, to probably work, probably work, we have to be uh, exposed to some degree by some of the pathogens that can uh, trigger our immune system to, uh, uh, to respond. Yeah. And, you know, and you're right, with this whole super disinfectant thing that we're doing, we are kind of maybe setting ourselves up down the road for it to be further susceptible to some of the common stuff that was, you know, we already thought was kind of there. So you're onto something there. Who knows what the future is going to hold? I, I do feel, however, that you know, at least for the near future, we're going to have to maintain some sort of a social distance and not really have that sense of connection. I do feel though, I have kind of ultimate uh, feeling that human nature is such that we are social beings and we, we, we crave for that touch that helps decrease the, the anxiety and the depression that we have. And hopefully down the road, we'll be getting back to doing this until the next uh, pandemic pops up. Right, because there probably will be one. Oh, like more than likely, more than likely. Yes. yes. All right. So, um, so, so, thank you for sharing your views on on that with me. Um, I'd like to shift just a little bit because what's in the current news right now is the the unnecessary killing of Ahmad Aubrey in Brunswick, Georgia, by two men, and it happened a couple of months ago, and they were just arrested yesterday or a couple of days ago. Um, what are your thoughts on that? 
Oh, that's, it's a very sad and unfortunate thing. And, you know, and this kind of harkens me back to almost like the same situation uh, that occurred around the whole Trayvon Martin situation, you know, and, you know, it's, it's my, my feeling about the, all these incidences when they happen is, you know, thank God for, uh, you know, social media, you can blame it for, you know, for being good and for bad, but sometimes, you know, the social, this, this new form of communication is able to bring things out in the light that happened in the dark darkness. And then I, I'm sitting here thinking, if it wasn't for social media, we would have never known about this, right? You know, and I'm not sitting here to kind of put any fingers or well, bl lay blame. I, you know, we have to wait to see what happens when the, the truth comes out and, you know, and it's put out for everybody to judge. But I just feel it's, you know, at, at least from what I've heard so far, it's just another one of those place, situations where things are happening and, 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 and you, you, you're trained to believe in a justice system but you know, some, somehow things don't even get to that level where uh, it comes out in the open for us to judge it. Um, it's very unfortunate that it's happened. And I feel like you know, this, uh, this kind of news on top of the situation that's happening right now just compounds on the physical and the mental stress and anxiety that people are experiencing. And it's unfortunate that it has happened. I'm hoping to kind of see what happens in the future and to see if this thing unfolds itself to kind of come to the truth and. For us as a as a country as a as a as a race to kind of you know see what happens and kind of uh, have it resolved, but it, it's just kind of disappointing to see that this happened again. Thank God for social media that it came out. Oh, definitely, it is very disappointing, and I am so thankful for social media because it has been said. I, I read a news article this morning, I think it was, um, that if if it had not been for social media with the them pushing the the fact that we saw the video finally pushing that making the phone calls sending the emails if it had not been for us being able to rally together through social media that these guys would still be free ah I, it's disappointing i i don't understand that but it is you know and this is a two so I, my take on this is you know this sort of stuff probably happens all the time and it's just only now we have a tool that can kind of bring it out and you know, kind of bring things to the forefront for some, for for at least for it to get a fair shake in the justice system, for mm -hmm. us to kind of really bring it out and kind of see what's happening. Yes, and you know what's even what what's hurtful as well is the fact that we are still here in 2020. The fact that we are still here, I tell you, uh, African Americans have a whole different outlook on a whole different perspective on PTSD. You know, when it comes to like just doing anything black you know we you hate to always bring the race um element into it but it's it's like forced on us you know it, when you see that these guys said that he was you know he was uh he was he looked like one somebody that had been burglarizing the area and so it was basically like um you know citizens arrest but then this other uh, i forgot his name right uh, at the top of my head um this uh other guy shoots towards a couple who entered his home because his home has a, has a for sale sign on it but he wasn't expecting them he shoots towards them he's arrested immediately and they don't even call the police until like four hours after it happened yeah. but then he's arrested immediately yet these other two white men go for a couple of months and with a video it was yeah. clearly very different you know uh, me as a, a, a black individual who lives out here, you know, I sometimes I have to put myself in a situation and say, you know, I could be the one running, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, or I have teenage, I have kids that are about to be teenagers, and I keep, you know, wondering, okay, so is it safe where I live? I mean, right. can these kids go walking in the neighborhood? You know, I, I trust that, you know, uh, that in this that, that people are just good-hearted, well, good, kind-hearted, and will not and will kind of give somebody a pass, but. And these kind of incidences happen and really make me worry. And you're right. We always have to kind of worry. It's always in the back of our head. It's kind of a burden we have to, to bear about doing whatever we do while black. You know, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, it's, that's the situation. You know, and, I, and that just compounds again on, uh, on people's well-being and their, their mental health and the, even their physical health like we talked about before. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Exactly. Wow. Yeah, so is there anything specific that you and your wife have uh, tr uh, told your, your kids, your, your boys specifically, about how to be safe while being Black anywhere? 
So, you know, my boys are, you know, my children are just kind of creeping into that, that teenage realm. And we've been kind of slowly, but not explicitly, giving them little pearls. You know, I, we, I feel like it's getting to the point where we're going to have to sit down and have a conversation. But, you know, they're just kind of realizing themselves right now. You know, and as I watch them grow, we, we have, we, we, we keep mental notes saying, okay, we have to kind of talk to them and prepare them. And we've been giving them small doses uh, over a period of time. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to start kind of tainting their world into a place where they kind of start looking at things in black and white. You know, I wanted to look at people as people, but I also wanted to realize the realities of what, you know, of, of, of life. And so what we have been doing, you know, implicitly is just kind of dropping little pearls. We haven't really gone straight out and told them anything uh, been straight up and explicit yet, uh, but it's coming. I think, you know, as they uh, get into middle school and 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 kind of start realizing the differences. Uh, we will have to have a, a sit down and when stories like this in the news, you know, we kind of explain what happened with regards to Trayvon Martin. Uh, we've explained now what's going on with this situation, you know, and as they come up, we try to to talk about it a little bit more so they understand. Yes, yes, and you know, it's almost unavoidable um, to not set that that seed of fear into their spirits because you have to share some element of these stories with them for them to actually understand the brevity of how serious it can be. And you said something that just made me think, you know, I have girls who are teenagers now. And because, I mean, I just, I just haven't had the conversation with them about what happened to Ahmad. I think mostly because they're girls and I'm thinking, you know, black boys and black men are the ones who have to um, be more aware of their surroundings and what they're doing while being black. But truly it's, it's the girls, they need to know that too. But I, I think I need to share that with them, but I think I protected them because I didn't feel like it was immediately applicable to them. Yeah. But I have to really, you know, you said something that made me realize I really have to uh, sit down and figure out how to share that with them because they don't watch news on TV. School is not in right now. So they're not talking to a lot of friends, you know, where the word can get out. Yeah. But I think I need to sit down and actually tell them this is what happened. But I also, I also need to figure out how to be careful of keeping, um, keeping their sense of safety at the, you know, mentally at the yes. forefront so that they don't, take it and, and just kind of um, let it manifest Process. and grow inside yeah. of them. But you have to share that because otherwise, if you say, look, I don't want you going here after this time or during this time or going there for this reason. And they're going to be like, why, why not? Everybody else does it. Yes. And you have to like tell them some things so that they really understand. Otherwise they're like, you're just being a little overprotective. And they, they tell me that already anyway, but <laughs> that's, that's how it happens. That's how it rolls. I certainly agree. I certainly agree. And, you know, I think the approach that I want to choose, I choose to do is to have, to have open discussion about it and have them process it on their own. Um, you know, I, I, I don't want to instill a sense of fear, but I want them to be aware, you know, yes. and then and think not things, all things are not equal. Um, but I want them to also kind of view the world like, you know, for, for the greater good and, 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 and then not everybody is, uh, is, 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 ill-minded um, so it, it just takes i think a you know a, a slow a long slow approach i call it the, the, the crock pot approach where you know you let it simmer for a long time and kind of have discussions so people can kind of they can come to their own, their own conclusions and hopefully they kind of see it through my way where they're like look you have to be careful so i think i commend you on that even even the girls i have a daughter too and i have plans to sit down and talk to her when she gets of, of age of all the things that can happen in life Right, right, exactly. Well, uh, Dr. Fredericks, thank you so much for your time and for joining me. Uh, I just wanted to say how much I appreciate it because I know you have a full schedule and I like, I, I like the fact that we were able to get your perspective on a few things. So thank you so much. And is there anything else you'd like to share before we wrap it up? No, thank you. I really appreciate being on the show. I, I, I love that uh, you, you were able to kind of call me and have me talk to me. You can come talk to me anytime. Again, if anybody's looking for any uh, uh, OBGYN care, you know, don't forget now Women's Health Care. We service uh, the community in uh, Alpharetta and in Johns Creek. And it be a pleasure to see you guys. Yes. Can you give them a website address or, you know, somewhere they can follow it's, you if you're on social media? Uh, I don't, unfortunately, I'm not that active with social media. I lurk a lot, but I'm not really doing anything. 
my web page, however, is www.nowwomenshealthcare.com. Okay, great. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And everybody, thank you so much for joining Tuesdays with Tammy. It's Tuesday and I'm Tammy. And I want you to leave with this message. Be better today than you were yesterday and be better tomorrow than you're going to be today. Thank you so much. If you'd like to be a guest on Tuesdays with Tammy, please contact me at www.tammyvon.com.